Okay, great. Um, so, API Built Michigan, actually, um, a lot of our work is either in coalitions, our history is really, um, actually comes out of a coalition, um, but I think just to speak more generally about it, I think, you know, there's a, there's a couple different kinds of coalitions. Um, and so, you know, you look at coalitions where Asian Americans are a part of them um, so that we can lend our voice to a broader effort. Um, there are coalitions where Asian Americans really need to be the leader of the coalition to make sure that we're at the forefront. Um, and we can get, we'll give an, a specific example of that later. Um, but then I also think within our community, and the Vincent Chin case aftermath um, are a great reminder of this, is that there also needs to be co there also need to be coalitions within the Asian American community and um, across ethnic lines. And we saw that um, obviously in, in the aftermath of the Chin case, and people across the Asian American community realizing, you know, this is something that affects all of us, um, and even just the root of it is of him being mistaken for one ethnicity. So I think, you know, there's a lot of different coalitions. Um, and API Go Michigan, our history is actually comes out of a coalition where we, um, in 2006, there was an anti-affirmative action ballot initiative that um, a number of Asian American groups actually came together about, you know, a dozen or more um, to say, you know, Asian Americans actually are very impacted by this issue. We need to educate our community about um, how um, affirmative action benefits our community. But also, what was really important was to lend our voice to the broader effort, um, because Asian Americans tend to be a wedge in that debate. Um, so we thought it was really important for our community to, um, to stand up to educate within and so that was an internal coalition, but also in the broader coalition, it's really important to make sure that other communities knew why and how Asian Americans had a stake in that effort. But I think just broadly, you know, nowadays coalitions, I mean, it's, that's kind of the way of organizing now. That's, you know, every, with any effort, there's a coalition. Uh, there, I, it, it was funny earlier, hearing some of the different panels, um, I was just thinking about Roland because he, if you look at all the different, um, with New Detroit and the Round Table and the Michigan Allies, I think Roland sits on like a million committees and coalitions. Um, but that's what we need, you know, we need broader uh, representation of Asian Americans in those coalitions, but not just a seat at the table, but actually, you know, with Roland's voice and all of our voices, making sure that people know why we have a stake in, in a lot of different civil rights issues. I think the only thing that I would add to that is um, I think a lot of coalitions are born out of a reactive uh, kind of mentality to, to a response to something negative that has happened. Um, and so one of the things that we strive to do uh, with API One Michigan is to really maintain those relationships. And I know a lot of people talked about that already, about the importance of relationship building, because it can't just happen out of, re out of reaction. We have to be proactive in making sure that we have a voice at the table so that uh, hate crimes and incidents don't continue to arise, that we are actively you know, making an effort to be in coalition, be supportive, be allies outside of our community, within our community. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess going towards media, media might be a way for the community and at large to be more aware of these issues. And so if Taekyung and Niraj could give us, uh, tell us a little bit about ethnic media in the Metro Detroit area in the past, present, and where it's going. Well, my newspaper uh, is only 11 years old, so I wasn't there when Vincent Chin uh, happened. But the, uh, we are, I'm very proud of uh, having something unique. Maybe this is the only one in the uh, US, which is the alliance among ethnic media. So we call uh, New Michigan Media, uh, Asian community, Hispanic, Jewish, African American community, and Latino community uh, got together. The publishers of those largest uh, publications got together to form a alliance. And the purpose of that is, of course, in, for the business side, we are marketing together to open uh, closed doors and big doors 
by corporation and government. But that was not the only reason. I mean, to be an advocate for uh, each community and also as a whole uh, community uh, uh, basis. There are a lot of good things going on, and I, re I have seen so many people volunteering every day for each community. But uh, there hasn't been much news flowing around uh, to each community for us to share. So that is our reason to work together. And not only as a preventative, I mean, not only as a, as, as a uh, agencies that sharing the news and disseminating our different ethnic community uh, stories, but we are there to be a preventative force uh, to let all the community know that we are working together and we have a, we are reaching out to half a million leadership. And if there is something bad happening, um, we hope not, but we can share the whole story. For example, in June, this is my paper, uh, you can see Dan Gilbert. Uh, there is a pool reporter for five of us. And <clears throat> so when there is a very significant story, you will see the same picture and same story in five different community newspapers. So this is, could be a big problem. Uh, and, and I want you to let us know if there is any meaningful story or, or any message that you want to send out. We can share the stories so that more people know, especially the people who know who has a language barrier, it will be very beneficial out of it. Those, those are some good points. I mean, uh, in the main, dealing with the mainstream media, of course, um, we can't always be advocates because we have to maintain our neutrality. Uh, but if you are an activist or in the community, um, it's important to develop relationships with reporters, in particular uh, newspapers or television stations uh, that you can go to when something happens. Um, earlier this year, I reported about the uh, representative, former Representative Pete Hoekstra incident. As you may know, he had a uh, uh, television ad, that campaign ad that many said was racist towards Asian Americans. And I know that the community was pretty active here. I roll and put out a release and we were able to quickly write a story about that. And once that story gets out, people see it and then there's a reaction Then um, you know, editorial writers weigh in. So things can get done and, and accomplished if you know who to contact. Um, in the Vince Chin case, of course, uh, Helen Zia played a, a, as a journalist, played a, a noted role in trying to get the word out. Um, so it, it can make a difference. Um, of course, today, you know, the big thing is social media. That's one way also to get your message out, whether through Facebook. It's very easy to create a page for a certain uh, event or for a certain issue that you're concerned about. Petitions, too, if you're interested in, you know, uh, it's very easy to create an online petition and get a lot of signatures very quickly, and that helps promote whatever uh, uh, cause you're in, and you can use it as a way to show to the journalist, hey, look, I already have, like, you know, 5,000 signatures in, in a week. Uh, it it kind of gives heft uh, to your cause. Um, another way, um, you know, obviously is Twitter. It's becoming even a way more popular than Facebook because it's so easy to contact legislatures, legislators, um, other elected officials, uh, in a very quick and efficient way. Um, and also it's important to find out where the reporters is active. Some may use email more, some may use Twitter, some may use Facebook. Um, but if you know where they're at, then you can reach them in a much uh, more efficient uh, fashion. But um, So those are the ways I think that you can uh, use the media for uh, the issues you're interested in. But uh, one thing I would say is that, and the good thing is that the climate is better now thanks to the work of uh, the Asian American community back in the early 80s, you know, as preparing for this panel, I was really stunned by the level of anti-Asian sentiment in Metro Detroit in the uh, early 80s. Just to give you one example, this is, this is from a 1983 Detroit Free Press story. It says, Detroit is, quote, quote, has an international reputation as the city that hates the Japanese. And, you know, even John Dingle uh, moves from Detroit, so refers to, refer to Japanese people as, quote, little yellow people. You had a Chrysler board member appearing on WJR saying, he's talking about competition with the auto, Japanese auto industry. He said, they asked him, what would you do? He said, quote, first I charter the Enola Gay. The Enola Gay is the plane that dropped the atomic bomb in Hiroshima. So it just gives you a sense of how the climate was really different then. The good news now is that these things would be uh, quickly repudiated, or I don't even think they'd be said in some cases. I mean, with the pedo should have had, it did happen, but I think now there's more uh, voices out there that would quickly condemn.
them these things. Stephanie, uh, Niraj brought up the people, people officer ad. Can you describe the role of coalition building in the effort to respond to the inflammatory campaign advertising? Sure. Um, so, how many of you remember the people officer ad? Okay, so not everyone had their hand raised. Um, I actually didn't watch the Super Bowl, um, uh, but I found out about the ad um, when I got an email from someone in West Michigan um, who's on our advisory board um, who had gotten a call from a reporter wanting a statement. So then I quickly looked it up um, and was appalled um, at what I saw. And so for those of you who had, haven't seen it, um, you should, actually it has been pulled um, from Pete Hoekstra's actual YouTube site, but I think you can still find it on YouTube. Um, and so basically this ad depicted a, um, an, a woman of Asian descent um, in a rice patty, um, essentially thanking, in a very uh, sarcastic way, thanking Debbie, um, stab it now, and then you use the term spend it now. Um, meanwhile, in the background, there was uh, sort of stereotypical Chinese music, and um, she was speaking in broken English. Um, for I think if most of you were to watch the ad, it would be pretty clear um, that she was Asian American um, being depicted in this rice patty. Um, so there, there was on multiple levels, there were um, a lot of things wrong with this ad. Um, and, and primarily because this was, uh, this had been a sitting uh, legislator. So, you know, looking at the role of anti-Asian rhetoric in campaigns, um, the National Council on Asian Pacific Americans actually in the aftermath of all of this, um, wrote a letter to the DNC and the RNC, and they actually had a listing of about a dozen incidents where candidates used either anti-Asian or anti-Muslim, or you know, mostly targeting either Muslim or Asian American uh, rhetoric. Um, basically, all from this election cycle. So this continues to go on. Um, but in terms of what API Vote Michigan did, along with MAPAC and ACJ, um, Really, the outpouring um, of disgust, really, with the ad um, was tremendous, and it also carried over to the national level. Um, but what APA Vote Michigan did was, you know, that night when we saw the ad, we quickly made a couple phone calls and got a quick statement together um, that we sent out, and was actually picked up by the AP and by the Associated Press. So because of that, um, got spread pretty widely um, and was quoted um, all over the place. So we in that statement was basically saying, if you're a candidate or if you're an elected official, this is unacceptable. Um, Asian Americans, as mentioned before, contribute to our state's economy and to the diversity of our state, um, and that um, all elected officials and candidates need to recognize that. But we wanted to actually go further than that. And so that's why we well, we reached out to MAPAC and ACJ and um, about, about 25 other organizations to actually come together um, in this building, um, actually, to launch a Respect America, Respect Michigan candidate pledge. Um, basically, you know, it's not enough to, to repudiate this one ad, but to, to call on candidates to say, if you're running for office, you need to respect our communities. You need to become aware of um, the issues going on in our communities. So we actually launched this candidate pledge. Um, and that pledge, I can have the text here, but basically the pledge says, you know, I pledge to run a respectful campaign to recognize the diversity of our state. Um, and so we actually got quite a few responses to that pledge. And then Senator Hopgood um, and Representative Rashida Tlaib, they actually went to the legislature and asked their counterparts to, to also sort of support this pledge. Um, so because of that, I think that we're, we are, on the radar in terms of, you know, we are a community that um, is not going to stay silent when things like that happen. Um, but I think, especially because it is 30 years after the Vincent Chin case, a lot of us in our in our comments to the media and um, in our statements referred back to this incident because, as someone mentioned earlier, I can't remember which speaker and which panel, but, well, actually, I think it was, it was Dean Wu, um, you know, the sticks and stones and the words, they're related. You know, it's not one or the other. Um, and so with this campaign ad, um, yes, they were words, and they're, but at the same time, 
Uh, we know that it's things like that that create the, the type of anti, or, or draw upon the Asian American sentiment that leads to things like Vincent Chin's case. So we really um, wanted to, to take a strong stand there. I think at this point, I'm going to open it up to the audience to the back. Can I make one more point? Oh, of course. Well, building <laughs> really, really that and also Vincent Chin's case, uh, well, I don't know, as a media person, uh, the, the people might think that Asians are already complaining and whining. Um, and that's what I hear personally from American friends as well. So, um, five of us, the, the, the publishers got together and talked about, well, instead of just waiting for something happens, how can we educate the whole community? And so we proposed a project to NEI, which is a new economy initiative, um, to uh, find uh, good successful Asian stories and Asian entrepreneurs and good businessmen in, in Michigan. Uh, so not only Asian, but ethnic and minority groups. So we are trying to find uh, like three businessmen or women every month. And it's been about a year. If you go to www.semichiganstartup.com, you can read a bunch of Asian entrepreneurial stories, and Hispanic, Arab, and you name it. Over five of us are there. Uh, we're going to do one more year. <clears throat> That's a very important part of it. I would add one thing and challenge a lot of the audience here who is the older generation. Um, I do not know how to use a lot of social media, um, and I'm not um, at that generation yet. Uh, I still, I just got a smartphone yesterday. Um, I would challenge you guys to learn from your, your children, the younger generations, um, how to be a part of that, how to encourage them to do that. Um, because the new way with technology, I mean, this is something that the newer generations are using every day and seeing, getting your voice out there. So on top of, you know, teaching them, learn from them and be open to them and learn about the social media so you can encourage the rest of the younger generation. So I, I would challenge you guys to do that and I completely agree with the social media getting your voice out there. So I thought that was a great comment. Thank you. Here's a woman. Um, kind of going off of what Brian said and what Teresa said about social media and how um, we need to bridge the gap between the generations, I feel like one of the barriers is the um, newspapers or media within the communities that write um, in their language, which a lot of the younger generation does not understand, or if they do understand how, like, if they could um, understand how to speak it or listen to it, they don't understand how to read it. So do you have any suggestions as to how us leaders in the future can bridge that gap between the, the media within the community and social media online and mainstream? Well, uh, it was a business secret, uh, but uh, I'm, some, I'm planning something that um, it, it is a website-based media for Asian community in Michigan. So I am having a lot of meetings with the uh, other uh, colleagues, like Philippine Community Newspaper. I'm going to ex extend that uh, information out to every Indian community. So if we can allow, uh, we can we can work together to create. Uh, a website doesn't make a lot of money, but we can still write something in English, and then um, to we can promote uh, a lot of different ideas. But all of also the Filipino community has has a newspaper in English. Here's a comment. Hello, my name is Martina Gifford. I just want to make a comment, if you don't mind. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm so sorry what happened to Vincent Chen. It's bothered me for many, many years. He was a wonderful man. He deserved, to, you know, he didn't deserve that. You know, and it really, really bothers me. What I want to do, I want to write a poem for Vincent Chen. My love for him, you know, and uh, I hope that things have improved a great deal since the killing of Vincent Chen. That's all I can say. I just hope it's improved. There's uh, two more here. I just while you're walking back there, I want to connect you to um, Emily Lawson, who's also um, a poet, also API studies at University of Michigan, who really taught me about Vincent Chen and um, made that connection for me and why it pushed me to the activism and, and what I do today. So talk to her, she's performing later too. Um, thank you again. I, I would just like to connect 
a comment from the Korean editor, I'm sorry, didn't get your name, and something that I heard yesterday on public radio about the study of the new immigrants, the Asian Americans, and that there have been two, um, two types of opinions on, on the study. And one of, it, one of these is that this has created a, stere a stereotype of Asian American being uh, better educated, um, having a higher income, so forth and so on, the more advantaged one of the minorities. And I thought, I don't think that I see very much in the mainstream media about Asian Americans reaching out to the general community. And I think that if we saw more of that, then that might also help change the profile of the Asian American continued, continuously complaining or being uh, mean to look as if they're always the victim. Thank you. Well, that's a good point. I mean, uh, when we are together, when five of us are together and had a 500,000 leadership, I mean, I think we believe that that alliance make our community stronger because we can deliver our message to the mainstream. And so the coalition has been broadened to like the Channel 7 uh, and WWJ 950. We have partnership uh, because we are together and we are ready to uh, convey the important messages and share among our communities. And we are being recognized from the major uh, media as well. So I, I think it is the same thing could happen. I mean, it is our challenge to deliver and share the news among ourselves, but how the, the biggest challenge is how to let the, the mainstream know about and, and, and know about us and, and what we are struggling with. So we, we have a long way to go, but this is a great first step we made to, to make an alliance and uh, help each other and work together. And and you are our customers. And if there is any and things that we can do, we can fight with them. So that, that is the different difference between the, the, the mainstream media under the name of journalism. If they have a hard time doing that, doing the advocating work. But we are but I don't want to be a journalist if I can if I have to give up that advocate work. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my question is, first of all, a uh, comment on the API uh, Your organization has done a fantastic job to, to get the uh, folks for, uh, to, to become voters. Because how I see it is this, is if we don't have the vote, we can't get anything done. So we need to support the coalition of the API vote number one. Now, just a thought, how do we get more? And I think Stephanie, we had a conversation before that uh, uh, your tireless, your organization tireless work, you have to get all the different events, like continuously. So that's the only way that you can get more votes, especially the one with the mom community and the other community that we don't touch. And that's what we're seeing at these at their events, whatever their events is, instead of like uh, uh, come to us, we have to go to them. And and if there's any way that we can get this. Uh, information out that listen, you have an opportunity, there's a voice for you here. If they don't know that, we'll never, we'll never get to those folks that are being bullied right now, you don't even know about. They're hiding in their homes, they're scared, they don't know what to do. We gotta find them, and that's the only way. API, I, uh, I believe in them, when they go out in the uh, different uh, events in the community, they make a difference, so let's keep supporting them. And thank you, API, I vote for all your work. Can I just say one quick thing? Um, well, actually, so the first thing is that uh, here's the number from the governor's office. It's 517-373-3400. Uh, and the PAX number is 517-335-6863. Um, but actually, I, well, I was thinking multiple things. In, in response to you know, Tess, I think your comment is really important. Um, at the same time, I think it's okay if, if people see us complaining a lot. I think that it's, in some ways we have to do both and highlighting the positive stories and doing the human story 
Like that's ultimately probably the most important thing. But if we're there, are, there are a lot of things to complain about, um, and I sometimes think that we actually need to do more of it. Um, and connecting back to the Pew report, you know, I think if people aren't familiar, there was a Pew report that came out um, earlier this week, and um, so basically this report it had inside of it it had a lot of good data, but the framing of it was basically even the first line was something like, you know. Asian, I think the USA Today article, the actual, the first slide was basically, um, new study confirms positive Asian American stereotypes. That's not necessarily the, the, the top line that we want of an article, um, especially when, you know, groups like Asian, AKI of Michigan have been doing a needs of assessment study that Prasanna Venganem, um, she wears multiple hats, um, that she's been leading, and we're finding that there are a whole host of problems that are going on, many of them um, in the education and employment immigration and civic participation areas that we knew anecdotally, but now we have data on. And the thing is, when you think about discrimination, I think someone mentioned this earlier, um, Asian Americans do underreport discrimination, and that's a problem. If we're going to address the problems that are going on, we need to better understand why it's important for us to, to voice our concerns about these things. Um, and so when you look at um, discrimination rates that are reported versus like you know, actual EEOC complaints that are taken, and there's a huge gap there, um, and that's a problem if we're going to actually improve the lives of our community members. And there's something I was going to say to, in response to Ryan, but I can't remember. <laughs> oh, well, then, so we are, we are trying to get out there as much as possible to do voter registration, um, and, um, and actually this weekend, Bad timing, but there is also uh, a big Bangladeshi festival that's going on in Warren, so we have our team out there as well today. Um, so, okay, um, just want to address some of the things that uh, have been spoken about. Um, sometimes things aren't taken very well, like uh, Stephanie was talking about. Well, it's good to complain, but if you want to get a, a message out. Usually, if if it's taken as a complaint is going to get a negative reaction. And so I think the, the Korean newspaper idea of uh, highlighting contributions and highlighting business people, you know, what people are doing are great. But um, if it's just written in the Korean language, it's not going to get out to the wider community. With, with um, there's been a, a problem in the newspapers. You know, a lot of newspapers have gone out of business and the Detroit News and Free Press have combined. Many newspapers, have uh, a very limited editorial staff. And so uh, what a lot of business people do is they write a news release and then they send it out. Many smaller newspapers are happy to print those. In fact, if you look at some of the newspapers, most of what they're printing is, is basically what is sent to them. And so if there were an English translation that were sent to like the Observer and Eccentric or the Price Somerset's Gazette or a lot of the smaller newspapers that may have limited uh, limited editorial staff that would make a, a much wider, much wider audience. Uh, it's not that expensive to send it out because now with electronic media, you know, have a, a big email list and send it out to a um, to a wide list of newspapers. Most of them probably won't won't uh, publish it, but some are looking for articles, and that's a good way to get the message out. And that gives a a, a positive. Uh, feeling because that's one of the things is a lot of people don't have don't have a lot of uh, exposure maybe to uh, Asian American communities and a lot of what you're hearing in the presidential campaign both the Democrats and the Republicans have blamed China for a lot of the economic troubles the Obama uh, administration has called China a currency manipulator <coughs> they're saying that's the problem for the for the economy yet the Obama administration has also had a, a weak dollar policy. They've done the same thing. They reduced the, uh, reduced the value of the dollar because they want to uh, increase exports and uh, reduce imports. So most people probably don't think that deeply about it. So by uh, spreading positive message and getting that out uh, to other media outlets, that I think that would make a, a big contribution. I'm sorry I didn't make it clear, but uh, I have two Korean writers and four English writers. That means we are writing that uh, entrepreneurial stories in English. 
and we are posting in every interview uh, stories in English. And, and, and Channel 7 is following us to write and to make their own footage based on our writing. So Channel 7 already made two uh, footage out of my story because they have no access point to reach into our community to know who is good to write about. So we are the one in the middle. We, yes, thank you. Uh, we have uh, about five minutes left, so we have three people actually raising hands, so we will finish it uh, very quickly, so make your comment or questions uh, quick. Thank you. Um, I agree with this gentleman's comment about, you know, positive things has to be said. Our community does a lot of positive things. Maybe we have not been really getting the media to cover it. You know, again, our culture, we don't go and taunt on things and talk about our, ourselves a lot, but maybe we should start doing that. But I'm going back to the point that Stephanie made. I work for the Department of Civil Rights. I don't really see a lot of complaints coming from Asian Americans when I know that there are a lot of discrimination against Asian Americans. Um, the Gallup poll, which was done a couple of years ago, said that 38% of the uh, Asian Americans, you know, have, I mean, the largest number of discrimination that has been suffered by any minority group is by the Asian Americans in employment, especially when it comes to promotions. You know, we are good worker bees, but we are not good manager, you know, managerial uh, you know, elements. So, um, people have to start complaining. They said that in the same study, only 3% of Asian Americans actually complain. So, you know, I always encourage my group of people to file complaints. You know, don't think about your culture that we don't want to file complaints, we don't want to make waves and things like that. Those things have to change. File complaints because there will be a number when we talk to the governor or to the president or whoever, if there is a record, that is going to help us. So I encourage people to do that. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to stop the conversation now because the Google Hangout starts at 2 and the movie is 45 minutes long. So She's been waiting for a long time. So. <laughs> you have a very important thing to say or is that something that make up? With, uh, within a minute. I just want to say, um, I'm glad to be here and to, to see the community. Um, I live in Pontiac, and we have a huge Hmong community, and I wanted to piggyback on what that gentleman said. How would we get the Hmong community involved in what's happening locally in Pontiac? Um, and then on top of what um, one of the other persons said, um, economically, um, with what's happening with the presidential campaign and, and things that are going on, how do you feel and what, what are you guys going to do as far as um, trying to make certain that they're not going to be using uh, Asians as a political football in this next election? Thank you. Thank you. Um, before, thank you, Emma. Um, hopefully you can continue these discussions with panelists uh, after the next programming. Let's thank our panelists.